Hello and welcome back to part two of my um, card making with explosion powders. If you haven't seen part one, make sure to pop over and check that out. It shows you how we made all these backgrounds today. I'm going to dive right in because I've got a lot to get through in this video. Um, getting started, I wanted to have some little strips that I could use um, on my cards um, as accents and things. And what I love is if I'm going to have tiny little strips um, or medium sized strips, I just like when they're already sticky. So I pulled out some scraps of gold in two different colors or two different styles. So you've got the matte gold and the shiny gold. I also found some bits of teal in my stash. And all I'm doing is taking this dot and dab double sided adhesive sheets and I am just uh, sticking them onto the back or applying them onto the back. Um, and then I'll trim off the excess that sticks over the edge. Um, but this is a brilliant way to go ahead and create some um, lovely little strips that are fully adhesive. So you don't have to worry about trying to apply glue to a small, skinny little strip. So here's my fully sticky backed uh, bit of card and all I'm doing is using my Tim Holtz trimmer and I'm just chopping <laughs> and I'm just chopping, chopping, chopping and making lots of really thin, really awesome little strips that I can use on my cards. So I go through and I do this with all the colors that I've got there, the shiny gold, um, then the two teal colors as well. And then I also do some on some of my colored strips that are left over from making my card bases, which you'll see in a second. Um, so I go ahead and do all that and have a whole bunch of strips ready to go in my pile. So here are all my card bases. I did three and a half by three and a half, four by four, five by five, and then those little black ones are three by threes. I got my flowers ready to go. I got some strips cut up from my scraps. I got my big pile of metallic and glitter strips that are all sticky backed and ready to go, as well as a few of the like really skinny versions of my um, leftover bits. I have got all my stuff ready to go. Okay, so I have gone ahead and I have cut everything out. I thought I would do a voiceover for this bit, but then I thought I usually forget stuff because I'm rushing to do my voiceover. So I wanted to explain this stuff here live and break down for you how I kind of go through my process of bulk card making um, and what I kind of do. So the first thing I do is chop up all of my um, panels into sizes that I want to use. So. I went with a lot of square cards. I thought I would do all squares. I really love square cards. I've got probably every size of square envelope. I just kind of go on eBay, have a look, and then buy a few. You don't need many. It's not like you can use more than 25 square envelopes of one size, and if you do, you can always order more. That's kind of what I do for envelopes. You could always make your own. I'm a bit lazy. <laughs> By the time I'm done making all my cards, I don't fancy making all my envelopes as well. So I tend to just buy envelopes. Um, if I don't have the right size envelope, I just use a bigger one. I don't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> if somebody's going to be bothered because their card came in a giant envelope and their card wasn't as big as the envelope, <laughs> ah well. <laughs> um, so I cut a whole bunch of my cards up into square bases um, or toppers, I should say. And then I work out my um, sizes kind of going from there. So I've cut all my bases and I like to stick with a nice round number. So for this one, I've gone with a five by five inch panel. So that is what I've done with my top panel that we created yesterday. I've done three other sizes um, of square cards. I just kind of go with whatever I feel like. My favorite is four by four. So I have a lot of four by four top panels. Then if I want to do a layer, I always do one eighth of an inch bigger for my layer. And I will share all these measures, measurements with you. I'll put them in the description box as well. So if you want to go with the same measurements that I've done, then that's great. One of the other reasons I love the four by four inch is because the, um, paper pad I used is nine by 12 inches. So four is a nice number that goes into 12 inches, which means I can get a lot more card fronts out of it. So that's why I've also done um, quite a bit of four by four. It just works out really nicely with the paper size that I've got. I work in inches when I do cards like this because I find nice round numbers much easier to work with. Um, if I go with centimeters, I don't find it as easy for some reason. I think because inches are nice, 
a smaller number to work with, um, it is easier for me, <laughs> just mentally. <laughs> so I work with inches when I do square cards. When I do normal size cards, I do the standard um, British centimeter um, measurement cards. If okay, so I do my top panels and then I do an eighth of an inch larger for my layer and then another eighth of an inch larger for my base. And then that way it's all nice and even and works out well. Now I've written down what I have done so that you can see my measurements because obviously your base of your card is going to need to be double the length because you're going to fold it over. Now I don't write down score numbers or score margins or anything like that um, because I just fold my card in half because I'm lazy like that. So when I've cut my base, I cut all my own card bases by the way. So having a paper trimmer and a good paper trimmer is really worth your investment. Um, I love creating my own card bases. I don't like being defined by buying pre-made ones. Um, so I always buy packs of cardstock um, in A4 size, but I also from Lime Tree Craft will buy in A3 or 24 by 12 inches. So they do a huge variety of sizes, but I like buying my cardstock so I can cut it down to fit the card that I want to do. Um, that's just how I work. I don't like the standard size every single time. I get a bit bored. <laughs> so, and I love the way that a square card looks. I don't know, it just feels really nice and even for me. Um, so that's why I do that. So this is my pearlescent card from Lime Tree Craft. It's topaz, um, I think white topaz. And I've just cut it to five and a quarter by ten and a half. And then I just fold it. And I always keep my bone folder to hand so I can then just smooth that line out because it does go wrinkly when you do it with your hand. But if you've got a bone folder, you can just smooth it out. If you don't, you could use like a knife, um, obviously not the sharp side or your cutting side, but the, you know, probably the handle would probably be a better one. Um, this is a bone folder I got from Stampin' Up when I used to do stuff with them. It is my favorite one. Um, it's not plastic, it's actually bone, which I know um, some people find very controversial and they don't like. I love it. Um, I'm not opposed to using it. I've used it for 10 years, maybe more, and it hasn't broken, um, hasn't fallen apart. It's got some ink stains on it, but it is really soft and really smooth and it doesn't wear down ever. So for 10 years of use, to me, it was really a good investment. I really like it. Um, so I have an actual bone bone folder, if that makes sense. Um, so I just smooth that crease down. This is the problem with me doing <laughs> talks like this rather than a voiceover is I get very chatty, so I apologize. Now I've cut my layer and I wanted to save this, but I got ahead of myself and cut it because I've done some of them already um, to speed things up. But basically I like this, how this gold is a very much the same color gold as in the, um, the explosion powders. <laughs> my word's right today. Um, and I got this um, cardstock from Tonic. It's called Honey Gold Roses. And sometimes it's difficult to see what kind of the colors are going to be like when you order things. I think I ordered it in the clearance section. And it's not my kind of gold. It's a very, very yellow gold. Um, so I haven't really used much of it. And I don't think I paid more than £1.50 or £2 for this pack of cardstock. But it works a dream for being my sort of border. It just blends in really nice and looks really good. But it is such a waste to have five by five inch piece of cardstock just hiding behind your panel. So, solution to that is to die cut them out. So I've got my nestable square die set. Now I toyed forever with whether to buy like squares and um, rectangle dies. I kind of thought they were pointless because you can cut a square and a rectangle so easy. But this is something where they are really handy um, to use. So either you could do like layers and have a nice border is one thing because you can't really do that on a trimmer very easily. But also for something like this. So because they're all square, most of them are um, in sort of inches when you've cut them. I found one that gave me a decent border and then cut out the middle. Now, <laughs> the bonus to that is for my 4x4 card, it makes a perfect background, that middle bit that I cut out. So I get, um, instead of 1 8 of an inch, I get more of a quarter of an inch, um, but it is absolutely perfect for going on these ones as well. So you get kind of a double card um, if you use your dies smartly or wisely. I don't think smartly is a word. <laughs> um, so I use my dies and I cut out the center 
so that I could make the most out of that cardstock, even though I don't really like it. It works so well with this color that I can now get more out of that. So have a look through your stash and see what you've got and make the most of those dies and, um, and you can get really smart and creative with them. So I'm going to um, speed up my video now and I'll do my voiceover now and you'll see how I go about assembling my cards and then we're going to get on to decorating my cards. So I've got my ba bases ready, um, my pieces I've showed with you, how I cut out the center of that square. Um, this is a trick that I learned from my friend Natasha Foote. Um, I love this trick when you need to line things up nice and central and you've got very little wiggle room. I've only got one eighth of an inch all around so I've not got much of a border to work with. What you do is you go ahead and you put a strip of double sided sticky tape on all four sides. You peel back the top corner on each side and when you do that you've only got the two the four corners that are sticky all the bits in the middle aren't going to stick because you've got the release paper still on so it makes it really easy to then line it up nice and central and stick it exactly in the middle so again I'm coming in with a thicker wider one that's covering that whole outside edge and then I can go ahead and put a bit in the middle as well just to kind of give it a bit more security I didn't put any in the middle the first time around because I was only doing that small edge because I'd cut out the middle of my square so I'm going to go ahead and lift all four corners. Then I can slide it round on my card because it's nice and wiggly. And when I've got it in the right place, you can push down in the center and pull your tabs out. And it just means you get a nice lined up image every time. So these are the five by five cards. And those are the measurements there for you if you want to write them down. I will also have them in the description box below. So I just wanted to share because I'm in the middle of making all my bases and get everything prepped. And then I realized I cut everything and don't have anything for die cutting. <laughs> so um, within a matter of seconds, I'm just making some more and whipping them up. Um, these explosion powders that I've got off craft stash at the moment they've all sold out <laughs> so I posted my first video last night and um, within three hours um, these three colors were all sold out so I apologize but if you put in your email into craft stash when you click on the item you can click on um, notify me when it's in stock and you can put your email in and they'll email you as soon as it's back in stock so worth bearing that in mind now I've made probably 20 panels at least and I can't, can't believe it I've just opened them out because I'm like I'm shaking them down tapping them on my desk trying to get that powder to the bottom to see how much I've got left and I kid you not every single bottle is still full <laughs> I don't know if you can see this do you see that it's it's literally just use the amount that's been in that bit there and the whole rest of the bottle is still full um, the mermaid one is my favorite. It's the one I've used the most and I've got that much left in my bottle after about 20 pages. So I don't know. They Maybe they're magic and they just carry on forever, but they are still full and I have done a whole bunch of pages. So this is really exciting. These are going to last me a long time. Look at this one. This is the Cupid, which is my least favorite and it's still halfway up the, the top. So it's it's just there. And the rest is full. So for £5.50 for each one of these bottles, these are going to last me probably the rest of my crafting life, I would guess. Um, so really impressed actually. I just wanted to share that bit with you. Now here are my 4x4 four four panels and this is where I've used a middle layer and these are the middles that we cut out of the previous squares. So remember the big ones that we just did um, and stuck them all together and I'd secretly cut out the middles of. Those are the ones that I'm doing on this one here. So I've got my top panel, my middle layer, and my card base. So here's those big ones that we just did. They've not got the middles because the middles are here. So a great way to stretch your supplies and stretch your cardstock and get beautiful layers. So moving along, we're going to do the exact same thing again. I've cut out these little ones. They're only three and a half by three and a half, but I thought, why not save the middles again? This is my favorite teal color. It is Turkish turquoise, and I picked this up on Craft Stash, and it is my favorite. It's beautiful. You only get five sheets, so I thought, I'm going to cut the middles out, and then I've got them ready to go for another card at some other point later down the line. 
So again, I'm going to take my thin double-sided tape. I'm going to run it along the edge, peel back just the corners so I can line it right up in the middle um, and not have it go too off-center. I tend to line it up towards the bottom of my card. So I try and make sure that the three sides that are not the crease are all nice and lined up. And then that way, usually the top is correct as well. And if not, then the top is easier to kind of cover up than the bottom, I find, in terms of your oopsie. Right, moving on, we've got the four by four inch bases. So I've gone ahead and stuck some onto the cards. I've not done a middle layer on these ones. They're just the four by four and on straight onto the card base. This is a nice, quick and easy way for a very simple card. These are all the ones I have left to stick on. I have absolutely loads because as I said at the beginning, I did four by four because that worked really well for my cards. Right, so we're gonna start stamping. I'm going to come in and line my card up in my stamp platform. I've got some removable um, sort of low tack tape there that I kind of use to put my stamp in the middle of my platform just so that it doesn't get stuck on any of those edges. Sometimes I find I get an uneven stamp if it's too close to the corner. Now with this one, I love this stamp image, but it's really long and I've already gone ahead and stuck all my card tops to my bases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and use my removable um, low tack tape again. I'll link this down below. I pick it up off of AliExpress. It's my favorite low tack tape. It's basically post-it note tape and that's the level of tack. And I'm just lining up with the bottom of my topper. And that way, when I stamp my image on, I don't get the ink going onto the bottom of my card. So it looks like I've stamped it before I assembled my card. But for my assembly line process, I assembled all my cards and then I'm decorating the tops. So you can see there, beautiful clean line. You would have no idea that I was all assembled and then stamped. So I love this flower. It is absolutely gorgeous. Right, then I'm moving on to this flower here. You've seen this in a lot of videos. I love it. It's one of my favorites. I'm going to go ahead and line it up in my platform, ink it up, and stamp it onto my card base. Now, I did this with several bases. Um, so I stamped out, you'll see four in the end, but I stamped out several bases. What I do now is I stamp it directly onto my platform. Now, don't put your fingers in that. That's really wet. It's going to stay wet. I'm going to take my dot and dab removable adhesive. I've got my bit of scrap card here. I'm gonna line up my scrap card where I want it to go on my image. So I've stamped onto my platform so I can see exactly where my image is. Otherwise, it's really hard to work out where you want um, your scrap bit to go. You'll see what I mean in a minute. You'll start to see the cards come together and you won't think I'm so crazy. So now I'm going ahead and stamping. And now I'm getting that image exactly where I want it to be on the card. So I've got my post-it note tape there. So I can see exactly where the top of my card base would be. So I know how far down my scrap bit of card is going to go. I'm doing this for a few times for a few different cards with different very varieties of scraps. I'm going to line up as many scraps as I want to have on the front of my card. So I'm stamping just once. Here's all those scraps that we chopped up at the beginning. Um, a lot of them have sticky back adhesive on them. These colored ones don't. So I'm going to go ahead and add sticky um, onto them later on. But all I'm doing is sticking them in my platform where I want them to go, using that removable adhesive to stick it to the platform. And then I'm using my VersaFine Onyx Black, which is a very, very dark black pigment. And I am just stamping over those scraps. Now I'm putting them to the side to dry because they do take a while to dry. To remove it, I've just used a bit of stamp cleaner um, and just wiped it straight off my platform. It doesn't stain and it doesn't stick. So it's really easy to work with. Now I'm coming in with my Tonic Nouveau Glue. This is a fantastic, really, really strong liquid glue. It is my glue of choice. I have got a ton of glue in my cupboard. I've got several bottles of it because I cannot live without it. And it's great because it takes a couple seconds before it adheres down, but it does adhere quickly. So I can go ahead and stick that glue on the back of it, have a little bit of wiggle room to kind of glide it into place because it can be a bit tricky to work out where exactly you're going. It's like a puzzle, you're lining it up. Um, but the liquid glue gives you a bit of workable time. But because this cardstock is so thick, it can start to curl just a little bit from all the um, moisture that we added the day before. So I'm just taking a heavy block and sticking it on top for about five seconds or so till it adheres. 
So here's that one. I'm going to come in with one of these strips. These are my lovely strips that we made that have a nice sticky back on them. Working out which one I want to put on, decide to go with the gold in the end. I just kind of pinch it with my nail to mark where I want to cut it off and then I just double check it's the right size. I'm going to go ahead and peel that release sheet off the back and then I can just stick that right alongside there and I got this beautiful little gold trim. So really quick and easy to do these cards, really effective. And if you've got a stamp platform, you can do this technique and it's really, really quite fun and quite satisfying. I think this one was one of my favorites, just these strips of color. And all these were, were the scraps that were left over from my backgrounds that I had already made. So there was no waste going on with these little bits of um, scraps, which I love as well. So on this one, I forgot that there was one more little strip, so I'm just adding that last little strip in on there um, and completing that card. So here's the last card that I've done. I will show you these again at the very end and kind of walk you through everything. Um, but they are so quick and easy to do, and I absolutely love how effective they are. And these colors are great because you can mix and match. Um, the red goes fine with the purple and goes well with the blue. They are just so lovely to work with. So we're moving on to some die cutting now. I've got these dies from Alina Shop. Um, one is kind of like a foliage, funky foliage, distressed foliage look, and the other is butterflies. Um, and I've got my sheet that I did earlier when I had to uh, stop my video <laughs> to kind of make up some more because I forgot to make some for die cutting or save some for die cutting. And I thought, let's go ahead and make up some die cuts. So I'm going to do the same thing again where I kind of want to cheat and don't want to have to glue all these fiddly little twigs and sticks and butterfly wings and things. So I've got my dot and dab, uh, re uh, removable, not removable, permanent adhesive sheets, the double-sided sheets. And I'm just going to go ahead and line up my cardstock again. Um, it's not going to fit perfectly because the cardstock is 9 by 12 um, and my sheets are A4, well A5 um, pieces of double-sided sticky paper. I don't need the full coverage anyways, I'm just being lazy and I don't want to have to adhere my little <laughs> um, die cuts so I'm just sticking them on to the back and what I've got is plenty. So I've got these um, bits of foliage, funky foliage from Alina and I'm just going to run them through my Big Shot and I run them through twice because the watercolor card is quite thick. It doesn't go through the release sheet on the back of the sticky, but it does go through that first layer. So as you can see, it pulls off really nicely. And I just have to pop out the little middle bits, um, all the little sort of middle holes in the foliage. Um, I just need to pop out and then it sticks down. And it's quite nice because I don't get this big mess of release sheets everywhere. Um, the, re the release sheet just sticks all together. And I love the contrast between the two colors. I think it looks so pretty. And in real life, they are so sparkly um, and shiny. They're absolutely beautiful. So I've got this happy birthday stamp here for my stash. And I'm just going to stamp that on the top. Um, and then I'm going to move on to my next card and embellish this and finish this off later on. I've got these nestable dies from Craft Stash. Craft Stash do ship worldwide. These are really, really great. They're eight by eight in um, the largest size, so they are quite big. You do need a bigger die cutting machine for the the, the really large ones, but there's several smaller ones um, that will fit a standard size machine. I wanted to do some kind of um, framing of these really cool colors. So I wanted to make some little outside edges to kind of make it look like it was a frame. So I thought I would go with white. I'm lining up the non-stitch circle in the middle and the stitch circle on the outside and running that through my die cutting machine. And then I'm going to run the stitched one through onto the color so that my stitched one and my outline are the same size as you can see here. I put the whites on and then I thought I didn't quite like it. It seemed too bright. So I went and did it in black and I like the black a lot more. So I've gone ahead and got those black ones ready. I've got my double sided tape from Alina Shop as well. This is my favorite foam tape. Um, it's perfect for shaker cards. It's perfect for manipulating and going around smaller areas. If you take the release sheet off the back of it, and so it's both um, double sided exposed, you can actually manipulate the tape really easily to go into any shape you want it to go in. So I've just gone around and made that circle and I'm sticking it down there onto my little image. Okay, so that was a fun day. It has been all of one day and I have been sat in my office as much as I possibly could creating a whole bunch of cards out of the 
um, fun backgrounds that we made yesterday. Now I've got a whole bunch to share with you, but I have probably half still left to do. I've really enjoyed today. It's been a lot of fun. It's been really relaxing and really good. So I will carry on making the rest of my cards, um, but probably next weekend or in the future when I've got a bit more time. So I'll share with you what I've done um, and kind of share with you what I will do uh, in the future with the rest of my cards. So in terms of the flowers, I haven't used many of them. I got carried away with stamping. I had a lot of fun with stamping. You can do really simple cards really quickly um, with just stamping. Um, as you've seen in the little videos that I've done. So I thought what I wanted to do with these flowers was do little clusters. So I've glued those ones on there. And I might stamp happy birthday in the corner here or I will die cut out happy birthday um, with a shadow die and stick that on there. And that's how I'll finish that one off when I've got a bit more time. So that's that one. And here's this one all finished. You saw me die cut out um, with Alina's dies. And then I stuck a flower on the top and added some gems, some sticky gems to kind of finish that one off. Now I didn't get round to doing these crazy cool kind of fire ones. Um, I think again for these ones I'm going to need to do some more die cutting and I just didn't have the time today. So I'm going to die cut happy birthday or something like that along those lines. I've got lots of scraps left of this one so I will make use of it. But I've got those four left to do something with which I love the backgrounds of but obviously you cannot stamp on top of black. So we will do something else unless I do um, maybe some embossing uh, on the top. Now here are the four cards that we did with the scraps and again I will come in and I will do a whole load more of these kind of cards because I've absolutely loads of scraps left. Um, and in my little tutorial I shared with you how to cut up all these little strips that all have sticky back on them. So I'm going to do a whole bunch of fun stuff with all these strips. I've got those colourful strips there left, um, the bigger ones and then... I've got my little box here still full of strips as well. So I have got so many ideas. It's not even funny. I want to do die cut um, circles and shapes using the scraps and stamp on them and stick them on the front of cards. Um, this was probably my most favorite um, of everything today. I love the result. What I will do is I'll come in with a sentiment strip on the top or I will die cut out happy birthday or thank you. One of those kinds of things with the um, uh, shadow dies as well. Um, and I'll probably add some gems on or I might leave some of them blank and just give them as blank cards so that they are ready for happy birthday or thank yous or whatever I might want to use them for. Sometimes I don't put any sentiments on my cards just so that I've got a card ready to go. In which case I'll probably add some gems on because I can't, I can't handle not putting a bit of glitter on. But these are my standard card sizes and these are probably my favourites I have to say. Now these little ones turned out so cute. The backgrounds just do all the work. You don't need much on them. These were my three by three um, or three and a half by three and a half ones. And I love how they turned out as well. I might go in and add a little bit of bling on the end, um, but I'm happy with them as the way they are. These will be easy and quick to post. If I don't put any gems on, it makes the postage a bit easier as well. So really, really happy with these cards and how they turned out. Again. I will do my best to link everything down below for you. So I'll try and link all the stamps down below. Um, I'll link all the supplies I used yesterday again. Um, any card stock or stamps or dies today, I'll try and link down below for you as well. So there's the just for you and I just stamped just for you on the bottom of each of these. And I love how they all turned out. I think they're so cute. Um, this one was my first one, so I didn't stick a sentiment. I might put a sentiment strip across the top. The rest of them I shifted up and allowed space for a sentiment at the bottom. Then I've got these ones here. I have not stuck any sentiment on them. I'm going to leave these ones blank. I love these beautiful flowers and how well this turned out. That is from this stamp set here, the Crafter's Companion stamp set, Fresh Florals. Um, I love it. I love how it's turned out. I have no intention of doing anything else with them. I think they are stunning. Then I did a couple with this stamp set here, um, which is really sweet uh, sort of mixed media butterfly. Um, I love how these ones turned out. I've left a space there at the bottom, so I'll come in with probably happy birthday or thank you to stick on the bottom of that. And I'll probably add some gems on to kind of finish off these cards. 
Um, I love how they turned out. I think they're really sweet. So make sure to go through your stash and have a look at what you've got in there, what you haven't used in ages, because when we do cards like this with a really, really awesome background, you can really get away with using some of your silhouette kind of stamps or your outline stamps. I mean, I've used a mixture of both on all my cards and they both look stunning. So either an outline image or the fully covered in the sort of shadow image. Um, they look beautiful. When you've gone through all that work and made all these amazing backgrounds, you don't really want to take away from it. So stamping images like this really kind of make your card. And just have a look. I bet you've got something in your stash that you can use to do something like this with. And the smaller your card, sometimes the easier it is to complete a card. I found the most difficult cards were my big ones. So for example, this one was a lot more time consuming um, and I thought a lot more about it, um, you know, because it's much a bigger surface area to cover. However, when you've got a nice small card, you can still get the same message across, like a birthday message or something like that, um, but you've got a nice small area to work with. So it feels less overwhelming and you can kind of produce more cards in one go than if you do all big ones. So don't ignore the small sizes and get out those stamp sets you've not touched in ages. So these ones I did the exact same. I lined them up on my stamp platform and just stamped them the exact same one after the other because they're both the same size card. Now these ones here are bigger ones again so they were a bit trickier to think about. Um, and I showed in the tutorial how I made the circles. I've got um, a few more that have black bases which I thought these would might look quite cool on top of so at some point I'll have a go and probably do something with these circles and just kind of make them the focal point. I'm not 100% loving my flower in the middle. I think I might add a 3D flower. These ones are great but they took up the whole entire circle so I'll either maybe make circles that are bigger because that would look so cool inside that circle um, or I will make smaller 3D flowers to go inside the circles and just kind of have them as like a focal point on the card. So I love how those will end up looking when I complete them. So those are all my cards that I got through today. I've got loads of bases left to kind of attach to my cards. And all these little ones, I've got so many of my favorite sized ones and I'm just going to do the exact same thing I've done before and get out my stamps and just stamp on them. And they'll be such a nice, quick and easy card um, for when you need one. Thank you so much for joining me today on my bonus Sunday crafting. And I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. See you then, bye.